What's going on, guys? Nicholas here. I wanted to take the time to talk to you about uh, derma rolling. To give you a little bit of history, uh, I'm a patient coordinator. I've been with the Four Hair Clinic for over eight years. Uh, I've come across this question as far as how do I derma roll? What are the benefits? Uh, what should I do in conjunction with derma rolling? Or is there anything else I should be aware of? So I wanted to cover some of those questions today. So I'm glad you guys could join me. So let's start off with what is derma rolling? Derma rolling is the use of small needles ranging from 0.6 to 2.5 millimeters in depth. And what you're doing is you're causing trauma to your scalp. This trauma promotes the release of growth factors, expands the wind pathway, and increases blood flow. The way you do it is you basically take the derma roller, roll it, roll it, or the uh, micro needle and stamp it. Now, let me go over one of the concerns I have with derma rolling, especially if you have long hair like mine, is if you were to take this hair, you're going to roll it up, and eventually it's going to get stuck. And when it gets stuck, it's either going to break off the hair or it's going to cause traction alopecia, ripping the follicle out from the scalp and forcing your body to have to produce another uh, or basically use up more stem cells to reproduce that hair. Now, your stem cell population is limited. So there's only so many hairs you can, uh, only so many stem cells you can use before you run out, kind of like how a cat has nine lives. Once the stem cell population is gone, it, you're not getting it back. Um, so it's very important that you're cautious when you're doing this treatment. If you do have a derma roller and you do have hair like mine, you might want to move the hair out of the way, stamp it, move some more hair out of the way, stamp it. You'll want to make about three passes. You'll want to make exactly three passes. And we recommend that you use a, a micro needle with 1.5 millimeters in depth uh, and that you do it four to six weeks. If you use a shallower micro needle, you'll do it more often, so maybe even a 0.6, you'll do twice a week. Um, if you're doing a 2.5, you might want to do that once every two months. Now, the risk you run into microneedling too frequently, especially at a uh, deeper depth needle, is scarring. Scarring uh, too frequently and, and, and too many passes will reduce blood su supply to the area. And if you were to come in for a transplant, we're going to have to be a lot more cautious when we transplant the area because it's going to cause limits to blood supply to the area, um, reducing graft yield if we pack it too densely. So it's very important prior to beginning this treatment that you consult with a physician on the optimal depth for you as what well passes and, um, and how often, okay? Now, circling back to uh, benefits, going back to it's going to increase an inflammatory, it's going to cause an inflammatory response. You're going to have a ton of open wounds on your scalp. Those open wounds will cause platelets in the area to uh, go to it and release growth factors. Those growth factors will help produce scabs and accelerate the healing process. And those growth factors also will improve the diameter of your hair. We see this typically very common in PRP. Microneedling is a great adjunct to PRP. And the reason for that is because, uh, one, PRP, you're releasing with calcium glycosinate to promote the release of growth factors. So you're not getting all the growth factors out. Microneedling will increase the growth factor release and it will also cause P, uh, platelets within the area to release growth factors as well. So it's kind of, kind of, kind of, uh, it's a nice little adjunct to go into it. Uh, if we also look into it, it expands the went pathway. Went pathway is something that shrinks at 24 years of age. And the reason we come across that, or we believe it's 24, is because we see a reduction in cellular rejuvenation at the age of 24. Basically, when your went pathway shrinks, signals aren't getting communicated back and forth. So certain Proteins are not being uh, released to cells in your area, causing miniaturization to the point, again, you don't have enough stem cells to populate a new hair. Uh, it also increases blood supply because um, it's constantly rushing blood to the area. We see that with minoxidil. Minoxidil also improves density. Uh, circling back to microneedling, as far as density goes, I, will see, I won't see one or two hair follicular units become three and fours, but I will see the diameter of the hair improve. You'll have vellus hairs becoming terminal hairs or pencils turn into telephone poles. As far as the ideal with the candidate for microneedling, you don't want to be a Norwood class six or seven. The more hair you have up top, the better you're going to respond. The earlier you catch it, the better you're going to respond. Um, when you're microneedling, you, may, you could also do it in conjunction with medication. When you do it in conjunction with medication, what you're going to see is those meds are going to go more systemic. When those medications go more systemic, 
um, is they're going to become more effective. The issues with doing it with minoxidil or the counter minoxidil is it has alcohol in it. So after microneedling, you're also going to have a burning sensation from the alcohol. So it's like two, it's microneedling in general at a 1.5 millimeter depth is painful. Adding alcohol just makes it a little bit worse. Um, when you do it in conjunction with finasteride or dutasteride topically, you also run the risk of increased sexual side effects like loss of libido uh, or brain fog. So you want to monitor how your body responds to it. If you see a drop off in libido, no point in treating your hair only, only to uh, kill your sex life. Because uh, that, I, in, in my opinion, it would be more uh, terminal to your, to your uh, mental health than, than hair loss. Uh, going back into when do you apply uh, or, or a proper application of this, we want to make sure you, you have an antiseptic to apply to your scalp. That will reduce the risk of infection. If you run into an infection, you're going to have a yellowing of the scalp, have skin irritation, and you're going to have itchiness. And hopefully, uh, hopefully not, but you might have to be prescribed an antibiotic to treat this infection. Uh, so very important to apply, apply an antiseptic. Now, microneedling, circling back, it is painful. You might want to get uh, speak with your physician about prescribing you a topical anesthesia. It is prescription based. The reason for that is it does it can run the risk of causing uh, scalp poisoning or scalp toxicity uh, if you apply too much or leave it on your scalp for too long. Um, there are physicians that will microneedle you, uh, so you may if you if you want to be cautious, you may want to have him do a couple sessions with you, see how he does it, build your confidence, or just have him always do it. Again, so it's a, it's a monthly treatment at, at the proper depth. Uh, circling back, I know I caught, discussed medications, anesthesia. Um, if I left something out, let me know down in the comment section if you have any questions. If you want to see different content down the road, definitely let me know as well. I'd be happy to produce that for you. Uh, I appreciate everyone for joining me this evening, and stay informed.